The rumble of a distant storm reverberated through the sky as Jack pulled into the nearly empty parking lot. The supermarket's neon sign buzzed weakly, casting a sickly green glow over the pavement. He had been driving for hours, trying to escape the thoughts that had been chasing him, and now, running low on gas and patience, he needed a break. The clock on his dashboard blinked 11.58 p.m., almost midnight. He didn't have much time before the store closed, so he hurried out of his car and into the building. The automatic doors slid open with a reluctant hiss, as if protesting his entry. The inside of the supermarket was unsettlingly quiet, the kind of silence that fills an empty house late at night. The air was thick, heavy with the faint scent of cleaning chemicals and something else, something metallic. Jack dismissed it as his imagination, too tired to care. He just needed to grab a few snacks for the road and maybe some coffee to keep him awake. He wandered down the aisles, the wheels of his cart squeaking occasionally as they passed over uneven tiles. There was something off about the store, though he couldn't quite place what it was. The shelves seemed too orderly, the products too neatly arranged, as if they had never been touched. Even the labels on the cans and boxes looked unnervingly pristine, almost as if they had been freshly printed. As Jack reached for a bag of chips, he noticed a woman standing at the far end of the aisle. She was staring intently at the shelves, her back to him. She wore a plain gray dress, her hair pinned up in a neat bun. Something about her posture made Jack uneasy. She was too still, too rigid. Excuse me, he said, trying to keep his voice casual. Do you know where the coffee is? The woman didn't respond. She remained motionless, her gaze fixed on the row of canned soups in front of her. Jack frowned, feeling a prickling sensation at the back of his neck. He cleared his throat and tried again, a little louder this time. Hey, I'm looking for the coffee. Can you help me? Still nothing. Annoyed and slightly unnerved, Jack gave up and decided to find it on his own. As he walked away, he couldn't shake the feeling that she was watching him, even though she hadn't moved. He found the coffee in aisle 13, the very last aisle in the store. The fluorescent lights above flickered ominously, casting strange shadows on the floor. Jack grabbed a canister and tossed it into his cart, eager to finish up and leave. But as he turned to go, something caught his eye. A flash of movement just at the edge of his vision. He froze, his heart skipping a beat. The aisle was empty, or so it seemed. But there, halfway down, stood another figure. A man this time, tall and gaunt, dressed in a tattered coat. He was facing away from Jack his head tilted down as if he was reading the labels on the shelf. Jack's first instinct was to leave, but curiosity got the better of him. He took a hesitant step forward, then another. As he drew closer, he noticed the man's hands, thin, bony fingers that clutched a can with a grip so tight it looked as though his knuckles might split through the skin. Sir? Jack called out, his voice echoing eerily in the silence. Do you work here? The man didn't answer. Jack was now only a few feet away, and he could see that the man's coat was frayed and dirty, as if it hadn't been washed in years. A shiver ran down Jack's spine. Suddenly, the man's head snapped up, and Jack gasped. The man's eyes were hollow, dark pits where eyes should have been. His mouth opened slowly, impossibly wide, as if stretching beyond the limits of human anatomy, and from that gaping maw came a low, guttural moan. Jack stumbled backward, his cart crashing into a display of pasta. The noise seemed to break the spell, and the man let out a high-pitched screech before turning and shuffling away, disappearing around the corner of the aisle. Heart pounding, Jack bolted in the opposite direction, abandoning his cart entirely. He had to get out of there. The exit was just ahead, and he could see the doors through the rows of shelves. But as he reached the end of the aisle, something blocked his path. The woman in the gray dress stood in front of him, her expression blank but now her eyes too were hollow voids, black and endless. She raised a hand slowly, pointing at Jack with a skeletal finger. Panicking, Jack darted to the side, ducking into another aisle. He could hear them now, more of them, shuffling footsteps coming from all directions, and that horrible moaning that grew louder with each passing second. He was trapped. He ran down the aisle, his breath coming in ragged gasps. The store was a maze, the aisles twisting and turning in ways that defied logic. No matter which direction he turned, he ended up back in aisle 13. The flickering lights overhead buzzed like a swarm of angry bees, casting long, twisted shadows that seemed to reach out for him. 
Suddenly, Jack skidded to a stop. In front of him, at the end of the aisle, stood the man in the tattered coat, his face twisted into a grotesque smile. Behind him, the woman in gray appeared, her hollow eyes fixed on Jack. And then he saw them. Dozens of figures, all emerging from the shadows, their eyes dark voids, their faces contorted into horrific grins. They moved slowly, deliberately, closing in on him from all sides. Jack's mind raced, searching for a way out, but there was none. The figures reached out with claw-like hands, their touch cold as ice. He tried to scream, but no sound came out. As the darkness closed in around him, Jack's last thought was a desperate plea for this to be a nightmare, for him to wake up in his car, safe and sound. But the supermarket had swallowed him whole, and in the end, all that remained was the flickering light in aisle 13, casting shadows over the now abandoned cart. The next morning, when the supermarket opened, there was no sign of Jack. The shelves were as orderly as ever, the products neatly arranged, and the lights overhead buzzed softly. And in aisle 13, a new employee stood, eyes hollow, staring blankly at the rows of canned goods. Story number two. It was a quarter past 10 when Olivia pulled into the nearly empty parking lot of the SuperSave supermarket. The neon sign buzzed overhead, its bright red letters flickering intermittently. She sat in her car for a moment, tapping her fingers against the steering wheel, debating if she really needed groceries this late. But her empty fridge and grumbling stomach made the decision for her. She grabbed her purse and headed inside. The automatic doors slid open with a soft whoosh, and she was greeted by the usual sights and sounds. Fluorescent lights buzzing overhead, soft elevator music playing in the background, and a lone cashier at the register, looking bored out of her mind. Olivia nodded at the cashier, who gave her a half-hearted smile in return. The supermarket was eerily quiet, the kind of quiet that makes your skin crawl. Olivia grabbed a cart and started down the first aisle, yet yeah, her footsteps echoing in the vast emptiness. She mentally checked off items from her list, bread, milk, eggs, and cereal. She turned into the canned goods aisle, glancing around for the tomato soup she liked. That's when she felt it, a prickling sensation at the back of her neck, like someone was watching her. She turned her head quickly, scanning the aisle. It was empty. Shaking her head, she scolded herself for being paranoid. After all, who would be watching her in a supermarket this late at night? Still, the feeling lingered as she grabbed the soup and moved on. As she rounded the corner to the dairy section, Olivia caught a glimpse of something moving out of the corner of her eye. She stopped and looked, but again, saw nothing. Just rows of neatly stacked products and the humming of the refrigerators. She forced a laugh to dispel the tension, chalking it up to her imagination. But then she heard it, a faint shuffling sound like footsteps on the tiled floor. Olivia's heart rate quickened. She pushed her cart forward, glancing over her shoulder more frequently now. The store felt colder, and the lights above seemed dimmer. The shuffling sound continued, sometimes closer, sometimes farther away, always just out of sight. She stopped in front of the freezer section, staring at her reflection in the glass doors. Her face looked pale and strained, her eyes wide. She took a deep breath, trying to steady herself. Maybe it was just the cashier moving around, she reasoned. But when she looked toward the front of the store, the cashier was still there, flipping through a magazine, oblivious. Deciding she'd had enough, Olivia headed for the checkout, abandoning her incomplete list. As she passed by the bakery section, she noticed a figure standing at the end of the aisle, half hidden in shadows. It was tall, wearing a long coat with the hood pulled up. She couldn't see its face, but she could feel its eyes on her. Can I help you? She called out, her voice trembling slightly. The figure didn't respond. It just stood there, unmoving. Olivia's heart pounded in her chest as she gripped the handle of her cart tighter. She took a cautious step forward, but before she could say anything else, the figure turned abruptly and disappeared around the corner. A wave of relief washed over her, followed by a new surge of fear. She quickly wheeled her cart toward the checkout, her eyes darting around nervously. She felt like a mouse caught in a maze, being watched by some unseen predator. As she approached the cashier, she noticed something odd. The girl at the register was staring straight ahead, her eyes glazed over, lips slightly parted. Olivia waved a hand in front of her face, but there was no reaction. Hello? Olivia said, her voice cracking. 
No response. The shuffling sound returned, louder this time, echoing through the aisles. Olivia's breath hitched as she turned around. The figure was back, standing in the middle of the main aisle, closer than before. She could see its outline more clearly now, its shoulders hunched, arms hanging limply at its sides. Who are you? Olivia demanded, trying to sound braver than she felt. The figure tilted its head slightly, as if considering her question. Then, without a word, it began to move toward her, its steps slow and deliberate. Olivia's mind screamed at her to run, but her feet felt glued to the floor. Finally, her instincts kicked in. She abandoned her cart and bolted for the exit. The automatic doors slid open with excruciating slowness, but she squeezed through as soon as there was enough space, stumbling out into the night air. She sprinted to her car, fumbling with her keys in her panic. She glanced back over her shoulder, expecting to see the figure right behind her, but it was gone. The parking lot was empty, the supermarket eerily silent once more. She got into her car, hands shaking as she jammed the key into the ignition and sped out of the lot. Olivia didn't stop driving until she was home, her heart still racing. She locked the doors behind her, feeling only a little safer. She tried to make sense of what had happened, but her thoughts were a jumble of fear and confusion. Who was that figure? And why was the cashier so unresponsive? Later that night, after several failed attempts to calm herself down, Olivia decided to call the supermarket. She needed to know if everything was okay, if the cashier was all right. But when she dialed the number, there was no answer. Just a long, ominous beep that sent a chill down her spine. Unable to sleep, Olivia turned on the news, hoping for some distraction. But what she saw on the screen made her blood run cold. A news anchor was reporting live from the Super Save parking lot. Behind her, police cars and ambulances with flashing lights were gathered. There has been a tragic incident tonight at the Super Save supermarket, the anchor was saying. Police have confirmed that a young cashier and a customer were found unconscious inside the store, both showing signs of severe shock. Witnesses reported seeing a shadowy figure inside the store, but police have yet to identify any suspects. Olivia's breath caught in her throat. Customer? She whispered to herself, dread settling in her stomach like a stone. She hadn't seen anyone else in the store besides the cashier and the figure. The realization hit her like a punch to the gut. She had never been alone in that store. There was someone else, another customer who had arrived before her. And whatever had happened, whatever that thing was, had affected them first. Olivia's blood turned to ice. She remembered the chilling feeling of being watched, the sounds of footsteps that weren't hers. But then, something even more unsettling dawned on her. If the figure wasn't after her, it must have been after them. And it was still inside. The news broadcast cut to a grainy security camera still from the supermarket. Olivia's stomach churned as she saw it. The tall, hooded figure standing just behind a woman who looked eerily like her. But it wasn't her. The timestamp showed it was from hours before she arrived. The shadowy figure leaned in close to the woman, almost whispering in her ear. Olivia's heart pounded in her chest. Her phone buzzed beside her, a notification lighting up the screen with an unknown number. Hands trembling, she picked it up. A text message flashed on the screen. You left too soon. We're still waiting. And then, the sound of shuffling footsteps outside her window. Story number three. The fluorescent lights flickered ominously above as Emily stepped through the sliding glass doors of the supermarket. It was late, far later than she usually shopped, but she had worked overtime and, and needed to pick up a few essentials before heading home. The parking lot had been eerily deserted, and now the supermarket seemed equally lifeless. The only sound was the hum of the refrigerators lining the back wall. As she grabbed a cart and made her way down the aisles, she noticed how quiet it was too quiet. The usual background noise of chatter, beeping registers, and rattling carts was conspicuously absent. Emily shrugged off the unease settling in her stomach. It was just late, she told herself. Everyone else was probably at home, enjoying dinner or watching TV. She moved methodically through the aisles, picking up bread, milk, and a few other items. As she reached the cereal section, something caught her eye. A man stood at the end of the aisle, facing away from her his posture unnaturally stiff. He was dressed in a long coat, despite the warm evening, and seemed to be staring at the shelves without moving. 
Excuse me, Emily called out, her voice echoing slightly in the vast emptiness. The man didn't respond. He remained as still as a statue, his head tilted slightly to one side as if contemplating the rows of cereal boxes. A shiver ran down Emily's spine. She considered turning around and leaving, but she shook her head. She was being paranoid, letting the quiet get to her. Maybe he was just lost in thought. She quickly grabbed a box of cereal and turned her cart around, eager to move on. As she did, she thought she heard a faint whisper, like someone muttering under their breath. She glanced back, but the man hadn't moved. Swallowing her unease, Emily continued shopping. The further she went, the more unsettling the supermarket became. The shelves seemed to loom taller, the aisles stretching longer, as if the entire store was subtly shifting around her. Once or twice, she thought she caught movement out of the corner of her eye, but when she turned her head, there was nothing there. Finally, she reached the produce section. The fruits and vegetables, usually vibrant and fresh, looked oddly dull under the harsh lights. She picked up a tomato, only to drop it in shock. It was rotten, its skin soft and moldy. She looked around and realized that many of the items were in similar condition, their decay filling the air with a faint, sour odor. Her anxiety spiked. Something was wrong. Very wrong. She needed to get out of here. Emily abandoned her cart and began walking swiftly toward the front of the store. As she passed by the bakery section, she saw another figure, this time a woman. The woman stood with her back to Emily, her head bent as she appeared to examine the loaves of bread. But like the man in the cereal aisle, she didn't move, didn't acknowledge Emily's presence at all. The whispering returned, louder now, a discordant chorus of voices just out of reach. Emily broke into a run, her heart pounding in her chest. She rounded the corner to the checkout lanes and froze. Every register was manned by a figure, all of them standing unnaturally still, their faces hidden by the shadows. It was impossible to tell if they were real people or mannequins, but she could feel their eyes on her, even though she couldn't see them. Panic surged through her. She needed to leave, but the sliding doors she had entered through were no longer there. In their place was a solid wall of shelves, packed tightly with canned goods. The exit was gone. Emily spun around, her breathing ragged. The supermarket seemed to close in around her, the aisles narrowing, the ceiling lowering. The lights flickered faster, casting strange shadows that danced along the walls. She bolted down another aisle, desperate to find an exit. The aisles twisted and turned in ways that made no sense, as if the store had become a maze designed to trap her. The whispering grew louder, more insistent, a chaotic mix of voices speaking in a language she couldn't understand. Finally, she spotted a door marked employees only at the end of a narrow corridor. Without thinking, she sprinted toward it and shoved it open, plunging into darkness. She fumbled for a light switch, her fingers brushing against cold metal until she found it. The lights flickered on, revealing a small, dingy break room. There was another door at the far end, and Emily hurried toward it, hoping it would lead her outside. She yanked it open and stumbled into a small, windowless office. A desk sat in the middle of the room, a single computer monitor casting an eerie glow. On the screen was a live feed of the supermarket's security cameras. Emily's breath caught in her throat as she saw herself on the screen, running through the aisles in a panic. But there was something else. Figures, dozens of them, appeared on the monitors, all standing perfectly still, their faces obscured. They were everywhere she had been, watching her every move. She backed away from the desk, her mind racing. This couldn't be real. It had to be a nightmare. Suddenly, the door behind her creaked open. Emily whipped around to see the man from the cereal aisle standing in the doorway, his face now visible. It was pale, almost corpse-like, with hollow, sunken eyes that seemed to bore into her soul. He smiled a grotesque, unnatural smile that stretched too wide, revealing rows of sharp, jagged teeth. Welcome, he whispered, his voice a chilling echo of the whispers she had heard throughout the store. You're one of us now. Emily screamed and bolted for the door, but the man was too fast. He grabbed her, his grip cold and unyielding. She struggled, but it was like fighting against a statue. The last thing she saw before darkness engulfed her was his twisted grin. The next morning, the supermarket opened as usual. The first customer of the day walked through the sliding glass doors, 
greeted by the familiar hum of the refrigerators. As they began their shopping, they passed by a new employee standing by the cereal aisle. A woman, her posture unnaturally stiff, staring blankly at the shelves. She didn't move. Story number four. It was almost midnight when Jake pulled into the parking lot of Parkwood Supermarket. The parking lot was nearly empty, save for a few scattered cars. He had taken the late shift, hoping to make some extra cash, but the eerie stillness of the place made him second-guess his decision. He turned off the car and sat for a moment, staring at the glowing sign above the entrance. The neon letters blinked irregularly, casting an ominous glow over the store's darkened windows. Jake grabbed his phone and saw a text from his girlfriend, Megan. Be safe. Call me when you're off. He quickly typed back, will do, love you, and pocketed the phone. As he stepped out of the car, a cold breeze swept through the lot, making him shiver. He pulled his jacket tighter around him and made his way to the employee entrance at the back. The store manager, Carl, was waiting for him just inside, his face illuminated by the dim glow of the break room light. Glad you could make it, Carl said with a tired smile. Just you and me tonight. The rest of the crew called in sick. Jake nodded. No worries. I could use the extra hours. Carl handed him a set of keys and a flashlight. You know the drill. Stock the shelves, tidy up, and keep an eye out for any troublemakers. We close at one, but given the weather, I doubt we'll see many customers tonight. Jake nodded again and headed into the store. The fluorescent lights buzzed overhead, casting a harsh light on the empty aisles. He grabbed a cart and started pushing it toward the stockroom. As he passed by the produce section, he heard a faint noise, a soft rustling, like something moving behind the shelves. He stopped and listened, but the sound faded away, replaced by the hum of the refrigeration units. Probably just a mouse, he muttered to himself and continued on his way. In the stockroom, Jake loaded up his cart with boxes of canned goods and snacks, then wheeled it back out into the main store. He worked quickly, placing items on the shelves and arranging displays. The monotony of the task lulled him into a rhythm, and soon he lost track of time. He was stocking the cereal aisle when he heard it again, a faint rustling, this time closer. Jake paused, looking around. The store was still empty, and the only sounds were the hum of the lights and the soft background music playing from the overhead speakers. Hello? He called out, his voice echoing in the vast space. Anyone there? No answer. He felt a chill run down his spine. He shook his head, trying to dispel the creeping unease that was settling over him. Just your imagination, he told himself. But as he turned back to his work, he caught a glimpse of something moving out of the corner of his eye. He spun around, but saw nothing, just rows of shelves stretching into the distance. Jake's heart pounded in his chest. He grabbed the flashlight from his belt and shined it down the aisle. The beam cut through the darkness, but revealed nothing out of the ordinary. He took a deep breath and tried to calm his nerves. Get a grip, Jake. It's just a quiet night, that's all. He went back to stocking the shelves, but he couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. Every now and then, he'd hear the rustling sound again, sometimes closer, sometimes farther away. It was like a game of cat and mouse, and he wasn't sure which one he was. After finishing with the cereal, he moved on to the dairy section. He was stacking cartons of milk when the lights flickered, plunging the store into brief darkness. His heart skipped a beat, and he dropped a carton, spilling milk across the floor. Damn it, he muttered, fumbling for the flashlight. The lights flickered back on a second later, but the store felt different, quieter, more ominous. He bent down to clean up the mess, and that's when he saw it, a shadow moving at the end of the aisle. He stood up quickly, shining his flashlight toward it, but the shadow was gone. He felt a bead of sweat trickle down his back. Who's there? He called out, his voice shaky. This isn't funny. Still no answer. The silence was deafening. He could hear his own heartbeat thudding in his ears. Jake decided to head back to the front of the store, where Carl was. He needed to make sure everything was okay. As he turned to leave, he heard the unmistakable sound of footsteps, slow, deliberate footsteps, approaching from behind. He spun around, flashlight in hand, and caught a glimpse of a figure darting into the next aisle over. Panic set in. He raced toward the front of the store, his footsteps echoing loudly in the empty space. When he reached the front, Carl was nowhere to be seen. The checkout area was deserted, 
and the register lights were off. Jake's mind raced. Where could Carl have gone? Carl? He shouted, his voice echoing. Carl, where are you? He heard a faint sound coming from the office behind the checkout counter. He moved cautiously toward it, every instinct telling him to turn back, to get out of there. But he needed to know what was happening. He needed to find Carl. He pushed the office door open and found Carl slumped over his desk, a look of terror frozen on his face. Jake's breath caught in his throat as he stepped closer, reaching out a trembling hand to shake Carl's shoulder. Carl? He whispered. Carl's body was cold to the touch. Jake staggered back, his heart pounding. That's when he saw it. A note on the desk scrawled hastily in Carl's handwriting. Don't let it see you. Stay in the light. Jake's flashlight flickered, and he quickly banged it against his palm to steady the beam. He backed out of the office, his mind racing. What had Carl seen? What was it? As he stepped into the main aisle again, he noticed the shadows seemed to be moving on their own, creeping along the floor and walls. The store lights flickered again, plunging him into darkness for a moment. Panic surged through him as he frantically waved the flashlight around, trying to keep the shadows at bay. He heard the footsteps again, closer now, almost right behind him. He broke into a sprint, heading for the exit, but the shadows seemed to close in around him, reaching out with long, dark fingers. He could feel the cold tendrils brushing against his skin, trying to pull him back. Just as he reached the door, it slammed shut with a deafening bang. He yanked on the handle, must, but it wouldn't budge. His flashlight flickered again, and he felt a presence behind him, something cold and dark. In a desperate move, he spun around and shined the flashlight directly at the source of the feeling. For a brief moment, he saw it, a shadowy figure, its face obscured, its eyes two glowing embers in the darkness. It recoiled from the light, shrinking back into the shadows. Jake didn't waste a second. He ran down the aisle, keeping the flashlight steady in front of him. He could see the emergency exit at the back of the store. His only hope. He reached the door and pushed it open, bursting out into the cold night air. He didn't stop running until he was halfway across the parking lot. Only then did he turn around, panting, to look back at the store. Through the glass doors, he could see the shadowy figure standing just inside, watching him with those fiery eyes. It didn't move didn't follow him. It just watched as if it knew he couldn't escape forever. Jake backed away slowly, his heart still racing. He fumbled for his phone and dialed Megan's number with shaking fingers. Megan, you need to. He started, but his voice faltered as he noticed his own reflection in the car window. Or rather, what should have been in his reflection. Instead, he saw the shadowy figure standing right behind him, a cold smile spreading across its dark face. Before he could scream, the line went dead, leaving him alone in the empty parking lot under the flickering neon sign. Story number five. The cold rain pelted down as Alex pulled into the dimly lit parking lot of the old supermarket on the edge of town. He cursed under his breath, his windshield wipers barely keeping up with the downpour. It was late, almost midnight, and he was frustrated that he had to be here at all. But after a long day of moving into his new apartment, he realized he was out of food and needed to stock up for the weekend. He parked near the entrance, noticing how the fluorescent lights above the doors flickered, casting eerie shadows across the wet pavement. The store looked rundown, far from the bright modern supermarkets he was used to, but it was the only one still open at this hour. He grabbed his keys and dashed through the rain, the automatic doors sliding open with a sluggish groan to welcome him. Inside, the store was strangely quiet. The air was thick with a stale smell, like old cardboard and faintly rotten produce. Alex shivered, more from the atmosphere than the cold, and grabbed a shopping basket. The fluorescent lights buzzed overhead, a few flickering sporadically, adding to the unsettling feeling that had settled in his gut. As he walked down the aisles, he noticed how deserted the store was. There wasn't a single other customer in sight, and the shelves were sparsely stocked, with several sections appearing almost barren. The silence was oppressive, broken only by the distant sound of a leaky pipe dripping somewhere in the back of the store. Alex tried to shake off his unease, telling himself that it was just an old store, nothing more. He picked up some basics, bread, milk, cereal, keeping his head down and moving quickly, eager to get out of there. But as he rounded the corner to the frozen food section, 
he stopped dead in his tracks. There, standing at the far end of the aisle, was a man. He was tall, with a thin frame, and dressed in a faded red uniform, the kind that employees might have worn years ago. The man was facing away from Alex, staring intently at the freezer doors, his hand resting on one as if deciding whether to open it. Uh, hey, Alex called out, his voice echoing eerily in the empty space. You work here? The man didn't respond. He didn't even move. Alex frowned and took a cautious step forward, unsure if he should just turn around and leave. But something compelled him to speak again. Do you know where the canned goods are? He asked, his voice hesitant. Still no response. The man's posture remained rigid, his hand now pressed flat against the glass, the frost on the door beginning to cloud under his touch. Alex's unease deepened into something closer to fear. He backed away slowly, deciding it was best to finish up and get out of the store as quickly as possible. He turned down another aisle, his mind racing with uneasy thoughts. But as he reached for a can of soup, he noticed something strange. The expiration date on the can was from over a decade ago. Confused, Alex picked up another can and then another. They were all the same, years past their expiration date, covered in a thin layer of dust. A cold dread washed over him. What kind of store was this? He thought about leaving, abandoning the shopping altogether, but a strange compulsion kept him moving forward. It was as if the store itself was drawing him deeper into its dimly lit aisles. He continued down the next aisle, eyes darting nervously from side to side when he heard a faint sound. It was a soft, scraping noise, like something being dragged along the floor. Alex froze, listening intently, his heart pounding in his chest. The noise seemed to be coming from the next aisle over. Taking a deep breath, he slowly crept to the end of the aisle and peered around the corner. There, in the dim light, he saw a figure hunched over, pushing something along the floor. It was the same man in the red uniform, his back still turned to Alex, his movements slow and deliberate. The scraping sound grew louder as the man pushed what looked like a large, heavy cart. But there was something wrong with the way he moved, something unnatural. His limbs seemed too stiff, his motions jerky, as if he was struggling to control his own body. Alex took a step back, his mind screaming at him to leave, to run. But before he could turn away, the man suddenly stopped and straightened up. He turned his head slowly, unnaturally, until his eyes locked onto Alex's. They were empty, hollow, dark pits that seemed to draw the light out of the air around them. His mouth twisted into a grotesque grin, revealing yellowed, rotting teeth. Alex's blood ran cold as the man began to shuffle toward him, dragging the heavy cart behind him. Panic surged through Alex, and he turned and bolted down the aisle, his feet pounding against the tile floor as he raced toward the front of the store. But no matter how fast he ran, it felt like the store was stretching out before him, the aisles growing longer, the exit further away. The lights flickered more violently now, casting the store in a strobe-like effect that made everything seem surreal nightmarish. Finally, he skidded around the corner, the checkout lanes in sight. Relief flooded through him, but it was short-lived. As he approached the registers, he saw more figures standing behind them, all wearing the same faded red uniforms, all with the same hollow, soulless eyes and twisted grins. They watched him, their heads turning in unison as he stumbled to a halt. Their expressions were void of any humanity, their bodies stiff and unnatural, as if they were puppets on strings. Alex backed away, the cart he had been pushing forgotten. His only thought was to escape, but every direction he turned, the aisles seemed to close in on him, the shelves towering higher, blocking any possible exit. Desperation clawed at him as he spun around, searching for a way out, when suddenly the lights went out. Plunged into darkness, Alex heard the scraping sound again, louder this time, echoing all around him. He could feel them closing in, their presence suffocating, overwhelming. Then, in the pitch black, a single spotlight flickered on, illuminating one of the checkout lanes. The register's conveyor belt started moving on its own, the scanner beeping rhythmically as if items were being scanned and bagged. But there was nothing on the belt. It was empty. Alex's breath came in ragged gasps as he realized what was happening. The store wasn't just old or creepy, it was alive, feeding on the fear of those who entered. And now it had him. The spotlight flickered out, and the scraping sound grew closer, until it was right behind him. 
Alex didn't have time to scream before the darkness swallowed him whole. The next morning, the supermarket opened at its usual time. The rain had stopped and the sky was clear. A few early customers trickled in, greeted by the friendly chime of the door sensor. Inside, everything was as it always had been. The shelves were neatly stocked, the floors clean, and the lights bright and welcoming. The employees, dressed in crisp red uniforms, stood at their posts, ready to assist. But in the back of the store, in the dark, forgotten corners of aisle 13, if you listened closely, you might hear the faint sound of something being dragged along the floor. Something heavy. And if you looked closely enough, you might notice that one of the new employees looked eerily familiar, his eyes dark and hollow, his movements just a bit too stiff. Story number six. The rain fell in a steady drizzle as David pulled into the parking lot of Haven Mart, the only supermarket still open this late. It was nearly midnight, and he had just finished a grueling double shift at the factory. Exhausted, all he wanted was to grab something quick for dinner and get home. The parking lot was practically deserted, only a couple of cars scattered in the distance. As David approached the sliding doors, they hesitated before opening, almost as if the store was reluctant to let him in. He shook off the thought, blaming it on fatigue, and stepped inside. The supermarket was dimly lit, with flickering overhead lights casting long, wavering shadows across the aisles. The usual hum of activity was absent. No shoppers, no staff, just an eerie silence that made the place feel abandoned. David grabbed a basket and made his way down the first aisle. As he walked through the store, he noticed that the shelves were oddly stocked. Items seemed randomly placed, with some sections completely full and others bare. It was as if someone had half-heartedly tried to organize the products but had given up midway. He shrugged it off. Maybe they were in the middle of restocking. But something about the disarray gnawed at him. David moved quickly, tossing items into his basket. Some frozen dinners, bread, milk. He glanced at his phone. No signal. He frowned, but didn't think much of it. The weather was bad, after all. He continued shopping, turning down another aisle, when he caught a glimpse of movement out of the corner of his eye. He stopped and looked, expecting to see another late-night shopper, but there was no one, just rows of neatly stacked shelves. David's skin prickled. He was sure he had seen someone. He shook his head and kept walking, telling himself it was just his imagination playing tricks on him. The sound of a cart rolling down the aisle behind him made him freeze. He turned slowly, expecting to see someone finally, but the aisle was empty. No cart, no person, just the distant hum of the lights. David's heartbeat quickened. Something wasn't right. He decided to head to the checkout. He had enough for the night. As he walked toward the front of the store, the lights flickered again, plunging the store into brief moments of darkness before returning to their dull glow. David's nerves were fraying. He quickened his pace, rounding the corner to the checkout lanes, only to find them all empty. There was no cashier, no staff, no one at all. He stared at the unmanned registers, the conveyor belt sitting still, as if frozen in time. David scanned the area, looking for a manager or anyone who could help him check out, but the store remained eerily silent. He spotted a bell on the counter, one of those small silver ones you press to get someone's attention. David reached out and tapped it, and the sound echoed unnaturally loud in the stillness. He waited, hoping for a response, but none came. Then, from behind him, he heard the unmistakable sound of footsteps, slow, deliberate footsteps, coming from one of the aisles. David turned slowly, his pulse pounding in his ears. At the far end of the store, in the shadows between the aisles, he saw them, figures barely visible in the dim light. They were standing still, just like mannequins but David knew better. They were watching him. Panic surged through him. He backed away from the counter, his eyes locked on the shadowy figures. He had to get out of here. But when he turned toward the exit, the automatic doors remained stubbornly closed. He waved his hands in front of the sensors, but the doors didn't budge. The footsteps started again, closer this time. David whipped around, and the figures were gone. He blinked, scanning the aisles, but they had disappeared as if they had never been there. His breath came in shallow gasps as he tried to calm himself down. He needed to find another way out. He bolted toward the back of the store, hoping to find an emergency exit. The aisles seemed to stretch endlessly, 
twisting and turning in a way that didn't make sense. Every corner he turned, he found himself in another identical aisle, the shelves looming over him like walls in a labyrinth. David felt like he was being herded, forced deeper into the store by some unseen force. The sound of footsteps followed him, never far behind. His panic escalated as he realized he wasn't alone. He was being hunted. Finally, he spotted a door marked employees only and sprinted toward it. He slammed through the door and found himself in the stockroom. The space was cluttered with boxes, crates, and half-unpacked shipments. The air was thick with the smell of cardboard and dust. David searched for another exit, and his eyes landed on a heavy metal door at the far end, labeled Emergency Exit. He ran for it, but just as he reached the door, the lights flickered and went out completely. The room was plunged into darkness. David froze, his breath coming in ragged gasps. He fumbled for his phone, using the faint glow of the screen to light his way. As he reached for the door handle, he heard a whisper, low and breathy, right behind him. Don't leave. David spun around, his phone's light cutting through the darkness. But there was no one there. His heart pounded in his chest as he yanked the door open and stumbled outside into the rain. The cold air hit him like a slap and he ran to his car without looking back. He jumped into the driver's seat, locked the doors, and jammed the key into the ignition. The engine roared to life, and David peeled out of the parking lot, tires screeching on the wet pavement. He didn't stop until he was miles away, back on the main road, heading toward home. His phone buzzed in the passenger seat. David grabbed it, relief flooding him at the sight of a signal bar. But as he glanced at the screen, his heart sank. A notification flashed across the screen. Thanks for visiting Haven Mart. See you soon. And below it, in the reflection of his rearview mirror, David saw the shadowy figures sitting quietly in the back seat, waiting. Story number seven. Mia stepped out of her car, glancing at the neon-lit sign that read Price Mart. It was past 11 p.m., and the sprawling supermarket was one of the few places still open. She cursed under her breath. How had she managed to forget dog food, of all things? Max, her golden retriever, had been whining for hours, and the guilt had finally driven her out into the night. The parking lot was nearly empty, with only a few cars scattered here and there. She crossed the deserted lot, her footsteps echoing in the stillness. As she approached the entrance, the automatic doors slid open with a familiar whoosh, but inside, the air felt unnaturally cold. She grabbed a cart, wincing as the metal handle bit into her palms. The supermarket was dimly lit, with only the overhead fluorescence buzzing quietly, casting long, eerie shadows down the aisles. Mia noticed that most of the checkout counters were closed, except for one at the far end, where a lone cashier stared down at her phone. The supermarket was unsettlingly quiet. There were no other shoppers, no distant chatter, not even the usual background music, just the dull hum of the lights and the faint squeak of Mia's cart as she pushed it through the aisles. She made her way through the store quickly, grabbing a few essentials along with the dog food. She wanted to get in and out as fast as possible. But as she turned down the aisle with the pet supplies, she noticed something strange. The shelves were half empty, as if someone had come through and cleared them out, but left everything in disarray. Bags of dog food were torn open, their contents spilling out onto the floor. Mia frowned, glancing around. No one else was in sight. She bent down to pick up a bag, but froze when she heard a noise behind her. A low, whispery sound, like the wind sneaking through a crack in the wall. Slowly, she turned her head, peering down the aisle. A figure stood at the far end, partially obscured by the shadows. It was tall and motionless, but she couldn't make out any details. Mia felt a chill run down her spine. Hello? She called, her voice trembling slightly. No response. The figure remained still. Mia slowly rose to her feet, clutching the dog food bag tightly. She took a step forward, and the figure seemed to shift, just slightly but enough to make her heart skip a beat. She turned her cart and headed in the opposite direction, moving faster now. The wheels of the cart clattered loudly against the tiles as she made her way toward the front of the store. She didn't look back, but she could feel something, someone, watching her. When she reached the checkout lanes, she found the same cashier still at her station, but something was off. The girl's eyes were wide, unblinking wide, and fixed on the same spot on her phone. 
Mia waved a hand in front of her, but she didn't react. It was as if she were frozen in place. Panic began to bubble up in Mia's chest. She looked around, desperately searching for another employee, but the store was completely deserted. Suddenly, the lights flickered, plunging the store into brief moments of darkness before coming back on with a sickly, yellowish glow. Mia's breath hitched. The supermarket was no longer just eerie. It was terrifying. She abandoned her cart and started for the exit, but as she approached, she saw the doors weren't opening. She stood in front of them, waving her hands, trying to trigger the sensors. Nothing. Mia's phone buzzed in her pocket. She pulled it out, hoping for some connection to the outside world, but the screen was blank, just static. The buzzing grew louder, more insistent, until it became an unbearable screech. She dropped the phone, covering her ears. When the noise finally stopped, she cautiously lowered her hands. Her phone was silent, the screen cracked and lifeless. The store felt different now, almost alive, as if it were breathing around her. A soft shuffle of footsteps echoed from one of the aisles behind her. Mia's pulse quickened. She glanced over her shoulder and saw the same figure from earlier, now closer. She couldn't see its face, but she knew it was watching her. She sprinted toward the back of the store, hoping to find another exit. Her footsteps echoed loudly, almost too loudly, as if the store itself were amplifying the sound. The aisles seemed to stretch longer, twisting and turning in ways that didn't make sense. She felt disoriented, trapped in a maze of shelves. Finally, she spotted an emergency exit at the far end of the store. She pushed through the doors expecting the cold night air, but instead, she found herself in another part of the supermarket. The aisles were the same, the shelves lined with products, but something was horribly wrong. The space felt distorted, like she had stepped into another version of the store. And then she saw them. More figures standing silently at the ends of various aisles. They weren't moving, just watching. Dozens of them, all identical, shadowy outlines of people who didn't belong. Mia backed away slowly, her mind racing. She needed to find a way out. But every time she turned, she found herself facing more of the figures. They were closing in, their presence suffocating. Suddenly, the overhead lights flickered again, plunging the store into total darkness. Mia's breathing quickened as she fumbled in the pitch black, trying to find her way. And then a hand, cold and clammy, gripped her wrist. She screamed, yanking her arm away, stumbling backward. The lights flickered back on, but the store was empty. The figures were gone. Everything looked normal, as if nothing had happened. But when Mia looked down at her wrist, she saw it, a dark handprint, bruised into her skin. The automatic doors at the front of the store hissed open, and without a second thought, Mia ran, not daring to look back. She didn't stop until she reached her car, slamming the door shut behind her. Her chest heaved as she tried to catch her breath. She glanced at the supermarket one last time, and that's when she saw it. In the window, a reflection of a figure standing behind her in the back seat of her car. And then the lights went out again. Story number eight. The automatic doors slid open with a soft hiss, letting in the cool air of the night. Olivia hesitated at the entrance, clutching her phone tightly. The small town supermarket had always seemed welcoming during the day, but tonight it felt different. It was nearly midnight and she had forgotten to pick up groceries earlier. So now she found herself standing alone, staring into the fluorescent lit aisles that stretched ahead like empty corridors. She sighed and stepped inside. The store was eerily quiet. No music, no chatter, just the hum of the lights above. The shelves were stocked neatly, but there wasn't a single customer in sight. Even the cash registers at the front sat unattended. Olivia frowned, checking her phone for the time again. 11.47 p.m. She wondered if she had just barely caught the store before closing. It wasn't uncommon in her town for workers to finish stocking up at odd hours, but the emptiness felt wrong. She grabbed a basket and walked down the first aisle. The quiet allowed her thoughts to drift back to the argument she'd had with her boyfriend earlier that evening. He'd accused her of being distant, and she didn't know how to respond. She wasn't distant. She was just overwhelmed. Life, work, family, everything was piling up. As she reached for a can of soup, she heard a faint rustling sound behind her. She froze, turning slowly to see nothing, just rows of shelves. She shook her head, laughing softly at herself. You're being paranoid, 
she whispered, continuing down the aisle. But the sound came again, closer this time. A soft shuffling, like feet dragging across the tiled floor. Olivia's heart quickened, and she turned sharply, peering down the aisle. Again, nothing. She hurried to the next aisle, tossing items into her basket without much thought. She had to be quick, get the essentials, and get out. The silence wasn't just unnerving, it was suffocating. She could feel the weight of it pressing down on her chest. As she reached the frozen food section, her phone buzzed in her pocket, startling her. She pulled it out, hoping it was her boyfriend checking in on her, but the screen was blank. No messages, no notifications. Odd, she thought. She could have sworn she felt it vibrate. As she tucked her phone away, she noticed something strange. One of the freezers had fogged up completely. The glass frosted over, but the others remained clear. She stared at it, feeling a chill creep up her spine. Slowly, she approached, her breath catching in her throat. A faint handprint was visible on the frosted glass. Olivia stepped back, her heart racing now. She glanced around the store, scanning for any sign of life. Still, nothing. She couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched. She moved away from the freezer, trying to convince herself it was just a trick of the cold, something logical. But as she made her way to the back of the store, toward the cleaning supplies, the lights above her flickered. Once, twice, then steady again. She swallowed hard, gripping the handle of her basket so tightly her knuckles turned white. She hurried through the last few aisles, grabbing items at random, just wanting to be done. But as she reached the final aisle, the shuffling sound returned, louder this time, followed by a low, wheezing breath. Olivia's hands trembled as she gripped the basket tighter, her eyes darting around the shelves. Hello? She called out, her voice echoing back at her. No answer. She quickened her pace, practically jogging toward the checkout area. But when she turned the corner, she stopped dead in her tracks. Standing at the end of the aisle was a figure, tall, shadowy, and unmoving. Its head was tilted slightly to the side, as if studying her. Olivia's breath caught in her throat. She couldn't make out any features, just a dark silhouette. She took a step back, and the figure mirrored her movement, stepping forward. Panic surged through her, and she turned, sprinting toward the front of the store. The automatic doors loomed ahead, her escape route, but they didn't open. She slammed her hands against them, but they remained stubbornly shut. No, 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 she cried, pounding on the glass. The lights above her flickered again, more violently this time, and she turned to see the shadowy figure now standing at the far end of the checkout lanes, slowly advancing toward her. Olivia's heart pounded in her chest as she desperately searched for another way out. She spotted an emergency exit near the back of the store and bolted for it. She could hear the shuffling footsteps growing louder, closer. Her hands fumbled for the handle, and she pushed against it with all her strength. The door swung open, and she stumbled out into the cold night air, gasping for breath. She didn't stop running until she reached her car. She fumbled with her keys, finally managing to unlock the door and throw herself inside. She locked the doors and sat there, panting, her hands shaking uncontrollably. For a moment, she just stared at the supermarket, half expecting to see the shadowy figure standing in the doorway. But the entrance was empty. The automatic doors now stood open, narrows as if nothing had happened. Olivia's phone buzzed again, and this time she saw a message light up the screen. It was from her boyfriend. Are you okay? You left in a hurry. She quickly typed back. I'm fine. Something weird happened at the store. I'll tell you later. As she pressed send, she glanced up at the store again, her nerves still on edge. The lights flickered one last time before returning to their normal steady glow. But then, in the rearview mirror, she caught a glimpse of something in the back seat, a shadowy figure sitting silently, watching her. Olivia's scream echoed into the night, but no one heard it. Story number nine. The rain poured heavily against the roof of the Green Hollow supermarket, creating a rhythmic tapping sound that filled the empty aisles. Emily, the lone cashier, glanced at the clock. It was 11.47 p.m., just 13 minutes before closing. She had worked the late shift many times before, but tonight felt different. The store was unusually quiet, save for the distant hum of the refrigerators and the occasional crackle of thunder outside. She sighed, brushing a strand of hair from her face and returned to restocking candy bars at the checkout counter. 
Emily hoped she could close up without any last-minute shoppers. She was exhausted and eager to get home to her warm bed. Just as she was about to start shutting down her register, the automatic doors slid open with a soft whoosh, letting in a cold draft. Emily looked up and saw a man step inside, his clothes soaked from the rain. He was tall, wearing a dark trench coat with the collar turned up. His face was mostly hidden under a wide-brimmed hat. She couldn't make out his features, but something about him put her on edge. Great, she muttered under her breath. A last-minute customer. The man walked slowly past her without a word, heading straight down the main aisle. Emily watched him for a moment, a sense of unease settling in her stomach. There was something off about him, something she couldn't quite place. Shaking off the feeling, she returned to her task, hoping he would make his purchase quickly. Minutes passed, but the man did not return to the front. Emily glanced at the clock again, 11.54 p.m. She debated whether she should go and check on him. It wasn't unusual for customers to take their time, but this late at night, she wanted to close up as soon as possible. Excuse me, she called out, trying to keep her voice steady. We'll be closing in a few minutes. There was no response. Emily frowned. She stepped out from behind the counter and walked down the aisle, peering into each section as she passed. The man was nowhere to be seen. The store was small, with only a few aisles, and she was sure she had seen him go down the main one. She reached the end and stopped, her heart beginning to race. Sir? She called out again, louder this time. We're closing soon. If you need anything, please come to the register. Still no answer. A shiver ran down her spine. She turned the corner into the frozen food section and stopped in her tracks. The man was standing at the far end of the aisle, staring into one of the freezer doors. He hadn't moved since she last saw him. His posture was rigid, his hands hidden in his coat pockets. Sir, are you all right? Emily asked cautiously, taking a step closer. The man didn't turn around or acknowledge her. He just stood there, staring into the freezer. The air felt colder, and the lights overhead flickered slightly. Emily took another step forward, trying to see his face, but the hat cast a dark shadow over it. Sir, if you're not going to buy anything, I'm going to have to ask you to leave, she said her voice firmer now. Finally, the man moved. Slowly, he turned his head to face her. His eyes were dark and expressionless, his skin pale and gaunt. Emily's breath caught in her throat. There was something unnatural about him, something that made her skin crawl. Are you alone here? He asked softly, his voice barely above a whisper. Emily hesitated, her instincts screaming at her to lie. No, she replied, trying to sound confident. The manager is in the back and a few other employees are closing up. The man smiled, a thin, unnerving smile that didn't reach his eyes. Is that so? He said, almost amused. Without another word, he turned and continued down the aisle, disappearing around the corner. Emily's heart pounded in her chest. She needed to get him out of the store, and fast. She hurried back to the front, grabbing her phone from beneath the counter. She quickly dialed the number for her manager, Dave, but the call went straight to voicemail. Damn it, she muttered, hanging up. She considered calling the police, but what would she say? That a strange man was being creepy in her store? They'd probably tell her to handle it herself. She decided to confront the man again, this time more forcefully. She grabbed the store's walkie-talkie and switched it to the intercom. Attention, sir, she announced, her voice echoing through the store. We are now closed. Please make your way to the front and exit the premises. The store remained silent, except for the hum of the refrigerators. Emily waited for a response, her hands trembling. Then she heard it, a faint rustling sound, like footsteps shuffling across the floor. It was coming from the back of the store, near the stockroom. She swallowed hard and stepped out from behind the counter again, clutching the walkie-talkie like a weapon. She crept down the main aisle, her eyes darting left and right. The shadows seemed to stretch longer, darker as she approached the stockroom door. Just as she reached for the handle, the door swung open and the man stepped out. Emily gasped and stumbled back, pluck nearly dropping the walkie-talkie. The man stared at her with that same unsettling smile. I'm afraid I got lost, he said calmly. This store is quite the maze. Emily's heart was racing. You need to leave, now, she said, trying to keep her voice steady. The man tilted his head as if considering her words. Of course he said after a moment, 
But first, I'd like to ask you something. Emily didn't respond. She just watched him warily, ready to bolt at any moment. Have you ever felt like you're being watched? He asked, taking a step closer. Like someone or something is always there, just out of sight. Emily's blood ran cold. She wanted to run, to scream, but her feet felt rooted to the floor. The man took another step forward, his eyes never leaving hers. It's a strange feeling, isn't it? Knowing you're never truly alone. Suddenly, the store lights flickered again, plunging them into darkness for a brief second. When they came back on, the man was gone. Emily's breath caught in her throat. She spun around, frantically searching the aisles, but he was nowhere to be seen. It was as if he had vanished into thin air. She backed away, her heart pounding, and rushed to the front of the store. She grabbed her phone and dialed 911, her hands shaking. There's someone in the store, she whispered, fear creeping into her voice. He, he's gone now, but he was here. The operator began asking questions, but Emily could barely hear her over the pounding of her heart. She glanced around, half expecting the man to appear again. She heard a noise behind her, a soft, almost inaudible whisper. She spun around, but there was nothing. Please, you need to send someone, she begged into the phone. I think, I think I'm in danger. As she spoke, she caught a glimpse of movement near the automatic doors. She turned her head slowly and saw the man standing just outside, watching her with those cold, dark eyes. His mouth moved, forming words she couldn't hear through the glass. Then, as quickly as he had appeared, he turned and walked away, disappearing into the rain-soaked night. Emily stayed on the line with the operator until the police arrived, but they found no sign of the man. The security footage showed nothing but static during the time he had been in the store. It was as if he had never been there at all. The officers took her statement, reassured her, and left. But Emily knew she wouldn't be able to shake the feeling that lingered. The feeling that she was still being watched. And as she locked up the store and headed to her car, she couldn't help but glance over her shoulder half expecting to see those dark eyes staring back at her from the shadows. Story number 10. The town supermarket, Greenline Groceries, stood at the edge of the highway, illuminated by the glow of neon lights. For the last five years, it had been Julie's safe haven. Her routine was comforting. Arrive at 10 p.m., stock shelves, clean up, and leave by 5 a.m. The night shift was quiet, a world of its own, far from the bustle of the daytime crowds. But lately, something had changed. It started with the little things, a flickering light here, a misplaced item there, but it soon grew into something more unsettling. Tonight though, Julie was determined to brush it off. She clocked in, grabbed her stocking cart, and wheeled it toward the aisles. The store was empty, as usual, except for George, the overnight security guard. He gave her a nod from his post by the front doors, and she waved back. Green Line wasn't a large supermarket, just a local spot catering to the townsfolk. It had a few narrow aisles, some refrigerated sections, and a small back room for storage. Julie rolled her cart into the cereal aisle, humming softly to herself as she began placing boxes on the shelves. The silence was calming, but it also made every small sound more noticeable. The faint buzz of the overhead lights, the creak of a floorboard, even the gentle rustle of packaging, it all seemed amplified in the emptiness of the store. As she reached for another box, she heard it. A soft, almost imperceptible whisper. She froze, her hand hovering in midair. The sound was faint but distinct. It came from the next aisle over. Julie's heart skipped a beat, and she strained to listen. But the store was silent once more. She shook her head, laughing nervously at herself. You're just tired, she muttered, returning to her work but the uneasy feeling lingered. She finished stocking the cereal and moved on to the next aisle. That's when she noticed something strange. The items on the shelves had been rearranged. Julie knew the store like the back of her hand, and she was certain that just an hour ago, everything had been neatly organized. But now, cans were stacked haphazardly, boxes were turned the wrong way, and items were out of place. Her first thought was George. Maybe he was playing a prank on her. She smirked and made her way to the front of the store, ready to give him a hard time. But when she reached his post, her breath caught in her throat. George was gone, his chair was empty, his security monitor still flickering with footage from the store's cameras, but there was no sign of him. George, she called out, her voice echoing through the store. 
No answer. Julie's stomach churned with unease. She walked toward the front doors and peered outside, hoping to see him on a smoke break or making rounds in the parking lot. But the lot was empty, just her car and George's truck parked under the dim glow of the streetlights. She turned back into the store, her nerves on edge. As she made her way down another aisle, she saw it, a shadow, darting just out of sight at the far end of the store. Julie's heart raced as she hurried toward the spot, but when she rounded the corner, no one was there just the empty aisles, the same as before. She pulled out her phone, checking for any messages or missed calls from George, but the screen was blank. The uneasy feeling in her chest grew stronger. She couldn't shake the sensation that she was being watched. Julie decided to head to the back room, where George sometimes took breaks. Maybe he'd fallen asleep, or maybe she was just overreacting. As she approached the back of the store, the flickering lights became more erratic, casting the aisles in and out of darkness. The back room door creaked as she pushed it open. Inside, the room was dark, save for the faint glow of a single swaying bulb. Julie stepped inside cautiously, her eyes scanning the room. It was cluttered with boxes and supplies, but no George. Then, from the far corner of the room, she heard it again, a whisper. This time, it was unmistakable. A soft, breathy sound, like someone trying to speak but unable to form the words. Julie's skin prickled with fear as she took a step closer. George? She called out again, her voice trembling. No response. The whisper grew louder, closer, and then, suddenly, it stopped. The room fell into complete silence, the kind that felt thick and suffocating. Julie's breathing quickened as she fumbled for the light switch, flicking it on. The bulb overhead buzzed to life, casting harsh light across the room. That's when she saw it. In the far corner, behind a stack of boxes, was George. He was crouched on the floor, his back to her, his body shaking. Relief flooded through her, and she rushed toward him. George, are you okay? She asked, kneeling beside him. But when he turned to face her, Julie's blood ran cold. George's eyes were wide, unblinking, his face pale and contorted in terror. His lips moved, but no sound came out. He was whispering, mouthing words that she couldn't hear. Julie backed away, her heart pounding in her chest. Something was horribly wrong. She turned to run, but as she did, the lights flickered again, and the room plunged into darkness. In the pitch black, she heard it clearly now, the whispering. It wasn't coming from George. It was all around her, closing in from every direction. Julie's breath hitched as she stumbled blindly toward the door, but the whispers followed, growing louder, more insistent. She burst through the back room door, racing into the store. The aisles were a blur as she sprinted toward the front doors, but when she reached them, they didn't open. She pounded on the glass, her panic rising, but the doors remained shut. Then, from behind her, she felt it, a presence, something dark and cold, watching her. She turned slowly, and there, standing at the far end of the store, were shadowy figures. They were tall and featureless, their forms shifting in and out of the flickering light. Julie's chest tightened with fear as the figures began to move toward her, gliding silently across the floor. She backed away, pressing herself against the glass doors. But there was nowhere to go. The shadows closed in, their whispers filling her mind, drowning out everything else. And then, just as they reached her, the lights went out completely. The last thing Julie heard was the sound of her own voice, whispering along with them in the darkness. The next morning, Greenline Groceries opened as usual. The day staff found everything in perfect order, just like always. The shelves were neatly stocked, the floors spotless, and the night shift sign-in sheet checked off by Julie and George. But neither of them were ever seen again. 